If you followed me for any length of time on this channel, you know that I really don't have a favourable opinion of keeping the House of Lords. I've said numerous times, um, before we even think about reforming our voting system, I think the best thing to go after, first of all, would potentially be a reform of the House of Lords to make it an elected body so that this is another thing that people can vote for. And we can push for that voting system being based on a proportional representation, something like a single transferable vote system, which again, I think would be the best version for it. And you could go, you could transform it from a House of Lords to a, um, you know, a people's house of, I don't know, regional representatives or just keep it you know name the house of lords but it's now just that you know keep the house of lords as like i don't know a legacy name whatever I, I don't really care about the name but you know it's it's the system inside it that really matters and every so often every so often though we have situations where we're about to talk like this where i am glad I am generally glad that we have the House of Lords in these types of situations because I've said before, I've said it numerous times before, if the House of Lords were actually the body that was running the country, Brexit would have never have happened. Like the, the discussions around Brexit and the, the post-Brexit, the trigger of Article 50, um, the debates over the withdrawal bills, negotiations, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in the House of Lords have been so fantastic, so grown up, so informative compared to the types of debates that have happened essentially within the House of Commons. And yet, these reasonable and, and very often very good discussions that have happened over the years have been ignored majorly by the press because the press doesn't really pay that too much of attention to the house of lords um as it should to be honest i think it should definitely pay more attention to them than we might again be able to get this moving forward but overall the house of lords I, i'm very conflicted i'm not gonna lie sometimes because like i say sometimes i'm so glad that we've got it um like i say in the story here but sometimes, yeah, it needs reforming. I'm not going to lie. We need to reform it. We need to change it drastically. And as much as I definitely agree to changing our voting system, I think that the better path or the first primary target for them should be to go after the House of Lords first. But that's a discussion for another time. Anyway, before we jump, do jump into today's article, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. As always, thank you very much to all those people who do support the channel. So, this comes from The Guardian. The title is, Patel Faces Widening Revolt Over the Policing Bill's Restrictions on Protest. You may remember, of course, um, this bill passed. It's going to the House of Lords now, uh, this week. And it generally looks like that there is going to be a massive revolt in the Lords where they're going to end up sending it back to the House of Commons in, again, what was often gets dubbed as the game of political ping pong with so many amendments that potentially the Conservatives have two choices. Either A, they support the amendments and the bill passes, but these amendments secure the bill's uh, right to to protest, protecting the protest, protecting the freedom of liberties of, of, of that the that this bill seems to massively restrict. Um, or they vote against it, and then the bill just doesn't go through and it gets stricken down. <laughs> so <laughs> essentially, Patel here is is basically um, about to get an absolute. Uh, absolute loss here potentially this week so home secretary Priti patel is facing a growing revolt in parliament and the country over plans to restrict the fundamental right to protest as the controversial legislation that would increase police powers enters the house of lords this week more than 350 organizations including human rights groups charities faith bodies have written to patel 
and the Justice Secretary, Robert Buckland, this weekend, complaining that the measures would have a profound impact on freedom of expression and represent an attack on some of the most basic democratic rights on citizens. And again, I want to point this out. Um, a lot of your free speech advocates out there um, aren't saying a word about this. They never have done because, again, I hate to say it, some of your uh, YouTubers that you follow, particularly on the right, don't really care. <laughs> and they aren't really that knowledgeable about politics in the first place. So, on Saturday night, the former Home Secretary, Lord Blunkett, said the hugely contentious bill would leave a toxic mark on British society if it were to pass into law unchallenged, and said, uh, said that he was sure that the peers would table amendments to the bills in the Lords, and if this succeeded, MPs would be left with the choice of striking them out or accepting them, and enough, enough Tories join a rebellion, defeating a very hardline Home Secretary. Even former Prime Minister Theresa May is one of the several Tories who have expressed serious reservations about the content of the bill during its co common stages earlier this year. May, a former Home Secretary herself, called on Patel to consider the fine line between popular and being populist. Our freedoms depend on it, she said. Blunkett told The Observer that he had a range of profound concerns. This bill will drive a wedge between the police and ordinary people doing what you would expect them to do in a mature democracy, expressing dissent on these issues they care about passionately. It will leave a very lasting and toxic legacy for this government, because this is not just only, uh, only the centre and the left of politics who care about protest. It's across the whole political spectrum. Those who object to the planning applications or to the fracking proposals or to the Euro European Super Leagues do not come together on the basis of party lines. They come together on the basis of an issue that affecting them or even their community. They have other ways of defending, uh, of dealing, we have other ways of dealing with those anarchists who would intend to try and capture legitimate demonstrations for their own purposes. And this bill does not achieve that goal. Grace Bradley, the director of Liberty, the one of the signatory organisations says the impact would be serious and wide ranging. The police bill creates a very dangerous restrictions on the rights to uh, on the rights to protest and threatens the very way of life for the gypsies and terrible communities. It creates new powers that will lead to harassment and oppressive monitoring of young people, working class people and the people of colour in particular and doubles down on existing measures that will funnel more people into criminal punishment systems. That as the time as this is the time for peers to stand up for our rights and reject this bill, for the government to reverse course on the array of dangerous proposals that it contains. Part three of the bill places restrictions on the new right to protest, including allowing police to start set start and finish times, set noise limits, and of course restrict protests that they deem to be a nuisance. Part four includes new criminal offences for trespass, which has led to countryside campaigners expressing concerns over the prospect for increasing tensions between landowners and those accessing outdoor areas. Patel has previously criticised protests by Extinction Rebellion as well as Black Lives Matter and pledged to prevent the former bringing anarchy on our streets. The Home Office points out that the police support bill and believe they will help to try and prevent protests causing disruptions, inconvenience and trouble on the streets. Sarah Mann, director of Friends, Families and Travellers, said this bill presents the biggest threat to the gypsy and travel communities that we have uh, seen for decades. We have huge opposition to these proposals, not only from the police, but across all of society in recognition of the implications for human rights and civil liberties. Earlier this year, Parliament and the Joint Committee on Human Rights sent the clauses which would allow restrictions to be imposed on protests because of the noise they generate can create powers to limit a one-person demonstrations such as those that take place regularly outside Parliament and provisions for increased penalties on people who breach the conditions placed on protesters should be scrapped. While, uh, while Labour voted against the bill, the bill passed on, uh, uh, on, on, dam on damage through the House of Commons and the select, select committee stages despite attracting very widespread criticism. 
Mike Burton, the former Chief Constable of Durham Constabulary, and Owen West, the former Chief Superintendent of West Yorkshire Police, and Lord Padrick, the former Deputy Assistant Commissioner for the Metropolitan Police, said, the far from enabling the police to maintain public order, these provisions will place a very onerous burden on the police officers of every rank in existence of their professional de uh, de description, subjecting the police to even greater political pressure. And again, I don't think... Um, anyone would want uh, generally that to happen um, because essentially you are sort of then making the police um, almost a political force by what a lot of these laws would enforce and you do not want that you do not want that at all so I'm very very hopeful uh, to be honest that this bill is going to get um, basically absolutely slammed uh, in the House of Lords there are going to be amendments and a plenty of them tacked onto it, which is going to leave, hopefully, to the defeat of this bill. And even if it does get through, there have been so many organisations that have said, the second this ch passes into law, there will be challenges in the High Court to call this, a lot of this bill into it basically unconstitutional. But of course, that will take time. So between, obviously, then and obviously the court date and obviously being found unconstitutional, who knows, like, the damage in between that that could happen between those going forward. So, as always, uh, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And, of course, down below there are links to uh, my Patreon page and a one-off station link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And, as always, thank you very much uh, to those people who do support me. And, of course, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.